All right. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. Shall we do this? I'm David Feldman, and this is the mop-up for April 28th, really, 2023. According to his top aides, Ron DeSantis will officially declare that he is a candidate for president next month. That way, he can drop out by June and have the entire summer with his family. Because nobody likes Ron DeSantis, probably not even his family. Why would they? He can't take them to Disney World. The only people unwelcome at Disney World are child molesters and Ron DeSantis. What a loser. You know, the guy has small kids. He's the governor of Florida, which means he could have Disney World wired if he kept his mouth shut. There'd be no waiting in lines, right? Disney World would be his oyster, but he had to go and piss off Disney. Who does that to their family other than Ron DeSantis? You know, I pulled a lot of D-bag moves as a father. Looking back, I regret. But ruining Disney World for your daughters? He's got two daughters and he ruined Disney World for them? Do you know what it's like to go to Disney World as a child and have Snow White walk up to you and say, your father's a twat? Do you know what that's like? Because my kids do, and I can tell you, it's not pretty. Ron DeSantis' daughters are pissed off. Meanwhile, the Disney company is suing DeSantis, accusing him of weaponizing Florida's government and punishing Disney for coming out against DeSantis's don't say gay bill. DeSantis says the case is completely without merit, just like his don't say gay bill, which is really called the Florida Parental Rights in Education Act, which prohibits teachers from discussing gender or sexuality with students. DeSantis believes that in Florida, these conversations should only be conducted at home between a young girl and her abusive stepfather. The Republican-controlled Montana State House censured Representative Zoe Zephyr, a Democrat and transgender state legislator, after she spoke out against Republicans banning gender-affirming care for transgender minors. Because she has now been censured, Representative Zephyr will not be allowed to debate any motions before the House and can only vote from her office. She is not allowed on the Montana House floor. Nice, right? Silencing someone because she criticized your views on gender-affirming care for minors. Republicans are real champions of free speech, aren't they? Between Ron DeSantis banning hundreds of books, forbidding teachers from discussing race or sexuality, and Zoe Seffer in Montana literally silenced, not allowed to debate any bills on the Montana House floor, you really got to admire the Republicans' party's commitment to the First Amendment. Let's be honest. Republicans only care about freedom of speech when one of them tries to cancel. Uh, they only care about freedom of speech when one of them gets canceled for using the N word. That's it. They only want freedom of speech. They only want freedom of hate speech, is what they want. Meanwhile, the Biden Justice Department has filed a lawsuit trying to block Tennessee's new law which bans gender-affirming care for minors, because that's the biggest problem facing the people of Tennessee, especially their children in Tennessee. You know, sure, they can't educate their kids. There's no money for education. It's one of the last remaining states that won't take Medicaid expansion under Obamacare, so their kids are underinsured or not insured at all. And of course, we all know they can't keep their kids in Tennessee safe from guns, but let's all focus on gender-affirming care for minors in Tennessee. That's the biggest issue facing Tennessee 
the Biden Justice Department says Tennessee's law violates our 14th Amendment's guarantee of equal protection under the law. And it's not just Tennessee, North Dakota just passed a bill banning gender affirming care for anyone under the age of 18. And Kansas passed a similar bill along with protecting bathrooms from transgender people. But some good news coming out of Kansas you may not know this, but they have a Democratic governor named Laura Kelly, and she vetoed that anti-LGBTQ bill. Kansas has a Democratic governor. Earlier this week, Joe Biden made it official he's running for re-election. Biden will be 86 when he wraps up his second term. He is already the oldest president in American history, like I need to remind anyone of that. Look, maybe his age could work for him. You know, people liked Reagan. They knew he was senile, but they liked Reagan. They knew George W. Bush was stupid, but they liked him. Maybe there's something reassuring about an old and doddering grandpa running America. You know, it makes it look like the country is stable, that it can be run on autopilot. That's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is our planet has seven years left and maybe we should have a president who plans to outlive it. Now, I, I know a lot of people who are sharp well into their late 70s and early 80s. Joe Biden is not one of them. But look, if you're, if you're not getting evicted, if you can afford health insurance, if you have enough money, say, for retirement, if your kids don't need money, if your parents don't need money, if you have nothing to worry about, then, uh, then Biden will make you feel like a liberal and it doesn't cost you anything. So go vote for him. Go vote for him and go F yourself. Now, again, I voted for Biden and I'm probably going to have to vote for, for him again. Uh, why did I vote for him? Well, he's not the best America has to offer, but Trump is the worst America has to offer. So I will vote for Biden because as long as Republicans keep scaring us, I'm going to keep voting for people like Biden. Now, uh, do I think Joe Biden is doing a good job wearing Trump down? I think the Justice Department is doing a pretty good job rattling Trump. I do. But Trump and Tucker Carlson are termites. And uh, if you get rid of them without fixing the wood, new and stronger termites show up. And, you know, next time these termites, they're better and they chew away at the entire house. Our house is rotting and we all know that. And Eventually, we're going to have to address the rot, and we're not addressing the rot. Right now, the only thing we can hope for is the mold will kill the termites. That's it. Basically, Joe Biden is the mold. It's, I'm voting for the mold instead of the termites. A new NBC poll shows that 70% of Americans think Joe Biden shouldn't run. 60% of Americans think Trump shouldn't run. Interesting, right? 70% of Americans think Biden shouldn't run. 60% of Americans think Trump shouldn't run. More Americans don't want Biden to run than don't want Trump to run even though all the polls show Biden beating Trump in the general election. That's how bad things have gotten. We prefer the guy we like the least. That's how bad it is. I guess it doesn't matter what we want, right? It no longer matters. In 2012, Obama got reelected, even though he was underwater in the polls. I don't know if you remember this, but more Americans disapproved of Barack Obama, more Americans disapproved of Barack Obama in 2012 than approved, but he won. In 2016, nobody liked Hillary, nobody, and nobody liked Trump. 
Both candidates were incredibly unpopular. They were all underwater. In 2020, Trump and Biden were underwater in the polls. Nobody liked Biden. Nobody liked Trump. We don't like our presidential candidates. We don't like our presidents. We don't like our Congress or our Supreme Court or our news media. Gee, I, I wonder why. The White House Correspondents' Dinner is this weekend, and Biden is showing up. And Hollywood is also coming. John Legend and Chrissy Teigen, Rosaria Dawson, Jerry O'Connell, John Leguizamo, and Lisa Vanderpump are all going to be at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. And Arnold Schwarzenegger is kicking off the event by recording a video how quickly we forget, don't we? Remember when the White House Correspondents Association did some serious soul searching four years ago and decided no more comedy, no more Hollywood royalty, no more glitz, no more merging journalism with show business. But here they are. They're, they're asking Arnold to record a video to kick off this year's White House Correspondents Dinner. The bad actor turned even worse governor is opening the White House Correspondents' Dinner. That's a great message from the White House Correspondents' Association, right? They promise no more merging of the serious business of journalism with show business. And uh, Arnold is kicking it off. Apparently, the White House Correspondents' Association did some soul searching and they came up empty. They couldn't find a soul. It's going to be flashier and show busier than ever before. And of course, you know, they'll talk about the First Amendment. Uh, they'll mention the Wall Street Journal reporter being held in Russia. But nobody would dare ask Joe Biden to halt the extradition of Julian Assange. That's the real First Amendment issue that the White House Correspondents Association should be concerned about. They'll just laugh it up, get drunk, go to after parties, and then after parties of after parties. And, you know, we'll hear nothing about Joe Biden's Department of Homeland Security allowing Core Civic, the for-profit prison company, to put uh, undocumented immigrants in solitary confinement for weeks on end serving them food you'd eat in a concentration camp. See, if you bring up core civic, putting asylum seekers in solitary confinement for weeks on end and feeding them food you'd eat in a concentration camp, that would go against the entire spirit of the night. Yep, the American people can't stand any of these people in Washington, D.C. They can't stand any of them. But like the Central American refugees in our for-profit prisons, this is all you get. Biden's running again. We don't want him to. Trump is running again. We don't want him to. But all we get is a can of spaghetti. Or if we don't like the can of spaghetti, you can have last night's chipped beef. That's it. If you're hungry, you'll eat it because it doesn't matter what you want. It just doesn't matter. Do you know we're putting refugees in solitary confinement, in for-profit prisons? The Intercept wrote about that this week. What, what is more important than that story? The beacon of democracy, the Statue of Liberty. We're putting refugees in solitary confinement, in for-profit prisons, core civic. The Intercept talked about it, but let's all throw a big party for the White House Correspondents Association. Well, after Joe made it official, Bernie Sanders immediately endorsed Biden. So that's it. That's it. There's going to be no challenge, no challenge of Joe Biden, Marianne Williamson and uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. Jesus. Uh, Marianne Williamson, great Great position papers. Ain't going to win. And Bernie isn't going to challenge uh, Joe Biden. 
so what's the best case scenario for America right now? Sadly, best case scenario is Biden gets reelected. And somewhere within the bipartisan infrastructure bill or the CHIPS Act or the Inflation Reduction Act, some, something in one of those bills will jumpstart some kind of technology that puts the oil companies out of business. That's the best case scenario. Something unforeseen happens that's good, that destroys the fossil fuel industry. Who knows? I mean, things are possible. Uh, Obama's stimulus bill right after the Great Recession literally jump-started the solar panel industry. Because of uh, Obama's stimulus bill in 2009, solar panels are getting cheaper. So maybe, who knows what Easter eggs are in the CHIPS Act or the Inflation Reduction Act or the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill. Maybe the planet has a few more years. But four more years, that's what we're looking at. Four more years of Joe Biden. And it only seems good compared to how bad the Republicans have gotten. The idea that they're selling us, the Democrats are selling us, is we ride out this fascist fever. But uh, Democrats, you know, like Hakeem Jeffries in the House, these, these corporate Democrats breed fascism. We end up with fascist parties because the Democrats offer no alternative. If the poor, when the poor, when the middle class, when families being foreclosed on right now, families being evicted right now, families, we have an eviction crisis in this country. When these people don't feel the Democratic Party is listening to them, which the Democrats are not, they're going to fall for fascism. We all know that. We all know that. Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley spoke before the Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America organization this week. When Nikki Haley was governor of South Carolina, she outlawed abortion after 20 weeks. Haley says she is unapologetic on her pro-life stance. But in her speech, she said, quote, this shouldn't be about one movement winning and another one losing. This shouldn't be about picking sides. Really, this shouldn't be about picking sides. Let's see, you're pro-life, I'm pro-choice. Your side has made it impossible for women to get an abortion. In some states, even after they've been raped. I'm pretty sure this is about one movement winning and another one losing. This is such a Republican bullshit move. I'm all about compromise, so long as you're the one compromising. Nikki Haley goes on to say, quote, let us discuss abortion as the important and deeply personal issue that it is. The deeply personal issue that it is. Okay, since it's deeply personal, how about you shut up? How about we discuss it only with our doctors and not opportunistic politicians like Nikki Haley, who couldn't give a rat's ass about babies or their mothers. Jerry Springer died. What a week. First Tucker Carlson and now Springer. It's been brutal for people who should have never been born in the first place. They say Jerry Springer transformed television the same way a shark in a jacuzzi transforms water. Until Jerry Springer, it actually meant something to be on television. Because of Jerry Springer, game shows and soap operas were soon considered too highbrow for daytime television. And so local stations decided the lowest common denominator needed to be lowered and more common. Why hire writers or actors when 300 pounds squeezed into a halter top will go on TV 
to accuse a giant tattoo wearing a trucker cap of infidelity. Throw a few chairs, you have drama and pathos. Who needs Aaron Sorkin? At the height of his popularity, the Jerry Springer show allowed middle America to watch these factory rejects and feel good about themselves. But soon our entire culture followed Jerry Springer into the gutter and then burrowed even deeper below the gutter so that now old reruns of the Jerry Springer show seem almost aspirational. Jerry Springer accelerated the end of our civilization. The only difference between his show and January 6th is Jerry Springer never made it to C-SPAN. Even worse about Jerry Springer, even worse about this man, is he identified as a liberal Democrat. He called himself a liberal Democrat, and he proved it every day by embarrassing the lower middle class and the poor. He proved himself a liberal Democrat by putting poor people on national television and treating them as objects of contempt. Liberal Democrats like Jerry Springer are no different from liberal Democrats like Al Gore, Barack Obama, or the Clintons. They have nothing but disdain for the poor. I'm sure Jerry Springer, just like Maury Povich, 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 I'm sure they both figured if I didn't host these shows, someone else will. Yeah, but you did. You decided to host these types of shows. Jerry Springer was the mayor of Cincinnati. He had political ambitions. Maury Povich is the son of a famous journalist and had a career in journalism before he turned to sleaze. Both these men, Jerry Springer and Maury Povich, they knew better, but they did it anyway. They did it anyway, even though they both knew better. They had choices. They chose this life. Jerry Springer found the ugliest, the stupidest, the vilest people in America and put them out in front of millions. Roger Ailes was starting Fox News, watched Springer and thought, why not give these idiots their own shows? And then Trump ran for president and they all got their own party. Like Tucker Carlson, Jerry Springer was no great intellect. Neither man invented cashing in on our basest instincts. They were just willing to venture where everyone else with a modicum of human decency refused to go. It doesn't take a genius to shove a TV camera into the bowels of Western civilization and keep shoving until you eventually strike gold. That's what Tucker Carlson, Maury Povich, and Jerry Springer did. Just when we all thought television had explored every nook and cranny of America's lower intestine, they found a marble-sized pouch of human excrement. And then Andy Cohen from Bravo thought, What if we infect these pouches of human excrement, shove a GoPro up there, and videotape the torn intestinal walls, the blood and the pus, and call it Real Housewives? In John Grisham's book, The Firm, his lead protagonist goes to work for a group of lawyers down south that does business with the mafia. And to keep its lawyers in line, the firm spies on everyone. Why? Well, they need damaging information on their own employees. They want to know if one of their employees is having an adulterous affair. Why? To use it against them. 
to keep them in line. And apparently Fox News took a page out of Grisham's novel, The Firm. We are now hearing reports that a senior producer for Maria Bartiroma is willing to testify under oath that she was asked by Fox News management to spy on Maria. Why spy on one of your own anchors? Well, to find out if she's loyal. Is she looking to go someplace else? Or, as seems to be the case with Maria Bartiroma, Fox News executives wanted to know if she was sleeping with Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy. Apparently, the rumor over at Fox News was that Maria Bartiroma was sleeping with Kevin McCarthy and management wanted answers, or at least Tucker Carlson certainly did. When Maria's producer moved to go work for Tucker Carlson, that's the very first thing he asked her, is Maria Bartiroma sleeping with Kevin McCarthy? Now, you don't only spy on your anchors just because the people at the top want gossip. Fox apparently asked workers to spy on their anchors and other employees to get actionable dirt, to make sure they do as and say as they're told, to make sure that they can't go anywhere else or ask for more money without the muck that's been uncovered bubbling to the surface and humiliating that employee, that Fox anchor, who's either thinking of leaving or of scorching the place should Fox decide to fire them. And it's important to keep in mind that Fox News is not an outlier. This is how politics, Hollywood, and corporate America have always operated. Fox News just happens to be run by idiots who keep getting caught. Getting dirt on your supposed allies, your co-workers. This is how things work in corporate America, either tacitly or implicitly. Read the New York Times. Read the articles that have been written about Anthony Pelicano, the detective who was known in Hollywood as the fixer. Read about how criminal attorneys, divorce attorneys, would hire Anthony Pelicano to get dirt so that court cases would miraculously disappear. Plaintiffs would miraculously be willing to settle for a lot lot less or not sue at all. Divorces went away. Read about how Anthony Pelicano would give big stars accused of rape a heads up on what the detectives who are about to charge the big star, what they have on the star so that the big star would know how to alter his testimony so he could come across as innocent. Read about how Hollywood's top managers would hire Anthony Pelicano to spy on their very own clients, to get dirt on their own clients, to keep their clients from leaving or from suing them. You know, your client accuses you of stealing from them, been known to happen. Managers and clients, managers tend to steal money from their clients. You hire Anthony Pelicano, he digs up some dirt on the client you're stealing from, and your client suddenly goes, you know what, on second thought, salute. Keep it, it's yours. What do you think the CIA does? You think it's keeping us safe from terrorists? Or do you think most of its time is spent spying on our allies, digging up dirt to protect America's financial interests? I think most of the work the CIA does is protecting America's financial interests by digging up dirt because it is dirt that makes the world go round. Why do you think Donald Trump became president? Why? 
because everyone has dirt on him, including Putin. That's who the people in charge want in charge. Someone who has a lot to hide. Same goes for Biden. I'm voting for Biden, but the same rule applies to Biden. The old guard in the Democratic Party likes Biden because he can be bought. He's got things to hide. Now, that's the truth. He's got things to hide, which makes him attractive to the people who run the Democratic Party because it's easier to control somebody who has something to hide. Now, I want the Republicans to leave Hunter Biden alone. It benefits nobody to destroy th this man's life. Leave Hunter Biden alone. But when you're a crack addict who owes $1 million in back taxes, and at the same time you're working with your father, who is Joe Biden, and your Uncle Jimmy to make money, you're going to leave behind a trail. A trail that tells the people who run the Democratic Party, Joe Biden has a lot to hide. We can control him. Put him out there in front. The dirtier you are, the more power you accrue. The Clintons were filthy. The Kennedys were filthy. The Bush family was filthy. LBJ was filthy. Filthy. It was their dirt that made them so attractive to the real people in charge. Politics isn't just about compromise. It's also about compromised people. If you want more money, if you want more power, then you must show me some dirt to make sure I can keep you in line. In the movie Serpico, Al Pacino plays a cop in New York City who refuses to take a bribe. The other cops from his precinct tell him to take his cut from the bribes. Do with it what you want. Give it to charity, but take the bribe so we know we can trust you. Take the bribe so we know we can trust you. Go watch Serpico. And Serpico is warned to take the money in order to fit in and to move ahead and to make sure his own police partners won't leave him to die, which they end up doing because he couldn't be bribed. Serpico was told, take the bribe. Prove to us you're part of the club. When you get to the top of the food chain in corporate America, in politics, in Hollywood, in academia, they want to make sure you've made your bones. How many people have you clipped? I heard you shut down an entire factory in Columbus, Ohio. Good for you. You're one of us. Come on in. You know how a Democratic politician makes his bones? By screwing over the left. Screw the unions. When Biden turned his back on the railway unions last year, the Democratic donors all said, I like this guy. He, he's willing to make the tough decisions. That's how you move ahead in Democratic politics. Be dishonest, lie to the people who voted for you, and then screw them over. That way, you can be trusted to make the tough decisions. I'm voting for Biden. I have no choice. In corporate America, it's screw your own corporation. You work for a corporation, you move ahead by screwing not just the people who work at your corporation, but the corporation itself. Steal as much as you can. Use the corporation as your personal piggy bank, especially if you're one of the top executives. Why save money for the corporation? It's just going to go to the shareholders. Screw them. You look at most corporations in America, 
they're in debt. They pay their workers crap, practically no dividends to their shareholders. They don't pay their taxes. The only ones making money are the CEO and his flunkies. That's it. Most corporations in America don't make money for anyone. The reason the stock market seems to be going up again is because of a handful of companies. You know, Microsoft, Apple, ExxonMobil, Facebook is going back up again. It's the way they weight these indexes. A handful of companies can make it look like the entire stock market is doing well. A handful of companies in America, the way they weight these indexes, can make it look like corporate America is doing well. It's not. It's why they're laying everybody off. You can make numbers say whatever you want. The same way a handful of families in America are hoarding all the wealth. But on Thursday, when they announced the economy grew 1.1% in the first quarter, they made it sound like, oh, everybody's benefiting. Yes, the entire economy grew 1.1%, but only a handful of families grab the profits. Half this country can't come up with $500 for a medical emergency. And yet the new numbers out on Thursday say we're not in a recession. Isn't it amazing how great everyone is doing? It's all about lying, lying to everybody. You move ahead in this country just by lying and cheating. It's not about loyalty. It's about dirt. It's about being a dirty human being. What, you're not going to pad your expense account on the business trip or try to bang Marla? Come on, I need to be able to trust you. That's the corporate mindset. And like over at Fox News, they're doing oppo research on their own employees. Oppo research on your own employees. Because in corporate America, your employees are your opponents. Your employees are your opponents. You go to work for a corporation, your boss is more afraid of you than it is the company you're supposedly competing against. In corporate America, your rivals aren't other corporations. Your rivals are your co-workers, people who will either try to take your job or ask for more money by threatening to quit. It's an extortion racket. That's what corporate America is. It's all about getting something over on someone. And the way to do that is getting something on them. Get some dirt. That's how you move up. As I've said on this program since the beginning, you don't move ahead in corporate America by doing a good job. You move ahead by being a bad person. The people at the tippy tippy top are ambitious. That's all they are. They're not talented. They're just ambitious. They loathe talented people because talented people remind them of what they're not. And so the corner offices of the C-suites are populated by voracious animals who are only comfortable around their own species. They only want to work with uh, other miscreants, other incompetents with sharp elbows. And their mantra is, let the fools do all the hard work down below us. But up here in the corporate, in the C-suite, we're breathing the rarefied air of revenge and deceit. In corporate America, I need to trust you means you're just as corrupt as I am. I need your secrets. I need your secrets. It's our bond. I need to know that if you get too ambitious, I can destroy you. It's why the rich and the powerful have to go to Bohemian Grove, places like Bohemian Grove, where they humiliate themselves before the older rich and powerful. 
Supposedly, Richard Nixon went to Bohemian Grove and allowed himself to be photographed up there wearing a dress. So no matter how high Richard Nixon climbed, his rich and powerful friends would always have something on him. J. Edgar Hoover. There's a picture of him in a dress. Why? Rolling Stone magazine is now reporting that according to eight employees, Fox News kept an oppo file on Tucker Carlson. An oppo file. They were doing opposition research on their own anchor, Tucker Carlson. Irina Briganti in Fox News's communications department allegedly kept an aggressively personal file on Tucker Carlson to make certain he wouldn't scorch the corporation if he ever got fired. Rolling Stone reports that Fox News had evidence that Tucker Carlson created a hostile work environment. Gee, what a surprise. A hostile work environment where the C word was thrown around like candy beaten out of a female pinata. In other words, Fox News was fully aware that Tucker Carlson was an abusive boss. He was making people's lives miserable. And instead of saying, we need to stop Tucker Carlson's workplace harassment, Fox News said, great, now we have something on him. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that Fox News fired Tucker Carlson primarily because evidence handed over to Dominion's lawyers during the discovery phase of the trial revealed in Tucker's text messages that he had a propensity towards referring to one of the top female bosses at Fox as a C-word. Supposedly, that's one of the reasons he got fired. The head of Fox News had no problem with Tucker calling other women the C-word. She just didn't want him calling her the C-word. There is also reporting that Rupert Murdoch wanted Tucker fired because Tucker, and I wish I was making this up, was making Rupert Murdoch uncomfortable because Tucker, and I wish I was making this up, was getting a little too Christian. Because that's, when I watch Tucker Carlson, the first thing I think is, boy, that guy, what a Christian. Rupert Murdoch felt Tucker was developing a messianic complex and was cloaking himself in the uh, religious right, the Christian right, and that makes Rupert uncomfortable. He thinks it's unseemly. Beating up on the transgender community, giving license to gun nuts to shoot up gay bars and black churches, that's fine with Rupert. But Rupert draws the line when you get a little too close to Christ. These people are messed up. These people are really messed up. Tucker Carlson, according to the New York Times, has hired Brian Friedman, one of the top lawyers in the business who was able to secure massive settlements for actors and newscasters who have been fired while they're still in the middle of their contract. It is a game of extortion. Fox News has dirt on Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson wants what's left on his contract. And there will be, this will be interesting, there will be drip, drip, drip of embarrassing information released anonymously about Tucker Carlson until he calls his lawyer and says, fine, let's settle. That's why his own employers kept a file on him. How many dirty secrets are you willing to have revealed before you cave we all have secrets, and nobody knows that more than Brian Friedman. That's him right there. That's Tucker's attorney. Uh, according to the New York Times this week and Insider, Brian Friedman, Tucker's attorney, 
paid 40 grand to make accusations that he participated in the gang rape of a 17-year-old girl while he was in college go away. He, he paid 40 grand to make accusations that he participated in the gang rape of a 17-year-old girl while he was in college to make it go away. According to the settlement, now this is the New York Times and Insider reporting on this. According to the settlement, Tucker Carlson's lawyer, Brian Friedman, insisted the 17-year-old girl consented to everything that transpired that evening. In other words, Brian Friedman, Tucker Carlson's lawyer, he wanted to place a fine distinction between gang raping a 17-year-old girl and gang banging a 17-year-old girl. In this guy's world, consensually gang banging a 17-year-old girl makes you the more honorable and innocent person. That's who Tucker Carlson hired as his attorney. Same guy hired by Don Lemon, who was just fired by CNN. Everybody who wants their money hires this guy to get it. Vin Diesel, Gabrielle Union, Kate Beckinsale, Julia Roberts, Robert Downey Jr., Quentin Tarantino, Maria Carey, Alanis Morissette, Lincoln Park. Yeah, he's a monster, but he's my monster. This is America, where contracts mean nothing. Divorce property disputes, child custody, employment contracts, they mean nothing. Corporate lawyers work in tandem with detectives like Anthony Pelicano and the media who publishes what they want to drip into the culture. It doesn't matter what, what the contract says. It's what's in the manila envelope that drops in front of you with photographs. You know, the first thing my attorney asked me when my divorce started was, what does she have on you? That was the first thing I was asked. What does she have on you? You have something, everyone has something you don't want people to know, which means that contract you signed means nothing. Civil lawsuits are mostly part of the public record. If you want to collect civil damages from Donald Trump after he raped you, your entire life becomes an open book, either in the courtroom or splashed across the front pages of the New York Post and other gossip columns. E. Jean Carroll is pushing 80. Why should she pursue this? Why is she going after Donald Trump in this rape trial? Because there's nothing Trump can do to her that he hasn't already done. Trump knew how the game was played, and so did E. Jean Carroll. That's why she didn't pursue it. There are nearly 26 women with credible sexual assault allegations against Donald Trump. You don't want to pursue it. When E. Jean Carroll finally came forward, L fired her. She was writing over at L, the magazine. They fired her. When Stormy Daniels came forward, her life was threatened in a Las Vegas parking lot. They threatened the life of her kid. Well, when you watch this, when you read about the rape trial that's going on right now, people throw up their hands and they say, well, the world is a tough place. No, it's not. America is a tough place. We're the outlier. We reward the violent. We reward the bullies. And we punish the weak just because they're weak. You know, the other night I was taking a walk with some friends and I blurted out, history will be kind to Donald Trump. I couldn't believe I said that. And I've been trying to figure out, why did I say that? Why did I say history will be kind to Donald Trump? Well, he's just a symptom of the rot. That's why history will be very kind. 
He's most assuredly a rapist, a con artist, a cheat, and a swindler. Conservatively speaking, he told 50,000 lies when he was our president. But history will be kind to Donald Trump because there was one truth he told. And that truth is, this is who we are. This is who America is. This is America. Take a good look at Donald Trump. This is who we are. We spend more money on weapons than the rest of the world combined. We're swimming in guns. The rich get richer while the poor get poorer. No other country is like this. History will be kind to Donald Trump because this is who we are. Please like this video. <laughs> Please. Please share it uh, with your friends. The only reason you're listening to me right now, the only reason you're watching this is because a friend of yours copied and pasted the link to the show and shared it with you. I'm not asking for anything other than uh, share this, please. This is, we get no support from anybody, Sam Cedar. Uh, but uh, so the only, only way you can thank me and help me is by sharing this on social media or in an email. Uh, please like the show, please comment. I read all your comments, you know that I do. Uh, I put hearts next to everything I've read. I can't, respond, I can't respond to every comment, but I do read every comment. And uh, office hours, every Friday night at 8 p.m., we do office hours, and I'd like you to come. The, if, if you're, wherever you're listening to this right now, the, the, the link, the Zoom link is in the description of the show. And... Just click on it, and it'll take you right to the landing page. Go to my website, hit Office Hours. It'll take you to the landing page. Subscribe to my newsletter. It has the link to Office Hours. Let me tell you who's going to be at Office Hours Friday night at 8 p.m., April 28th. It is an evening of comedy, mental illness, music, history, and politics. That's what we're calling Friday night's office hours. Our guests are comedian Ethan Hershenfeld, Freudian psychoanalyst Dr. Philip Hershenfeld, Bay Area Radio Hall, Radio Hall of Famer Peter B. Collins, Professor Harvey J. K., author of FDR on Democracy, and Professor Mike Steinell, author of Saving Charlie Parker, a novel, Friday night at 8 p.m., doesn't cost you anything. And we're recording some of these conversations for my podcast. And I would love you to come. And I'd love to meet you. Raise your hand, join the conversation uh, in the chat room or raise your hand and ask a question. I, I make myself available to meet all my listeners or a little show. So I can, <laughs> I can meet my listeners, all, all three of you. So please come to office hours. I think that covers everything. I think it does. All right. I'm David Feldman reminding you to stay strong and protect the weak.